Hey friends, hola and aloha. Hey, we are continuing our look at uh, Philippians, Paul's letter to the Philippians in uh, chapter one. And I believe that God wants to give us grace to experience freedom in the midst of suffering. Somehow God can turn our terrible circumstances into opportunities for joy and amazing good things for us and for those around us. We need to see things from, from God's perspective. So today we're, we're picking it up, Philippians chapter 1, verse 12. Before we look at Philippians, I want to refer back to Acts chapter 16, just kind of sum it up again. Acts 16 is the introduction to the book of Philippians. And there we see that Paul had led, or sorry, the Lord had led Paul and Silas and company to, uh, to Philippi. And uh, Philippi was a, a city in, in northern Greece. It was uh, along a, a trade route in Macedonia. And I'm just going to move out of the way here and have a little arrow pointing to where Philippi was. And I want to get back to the map here in a minute. But in that, in that city, um, the Lord led them to, to, first of all, 
to a, a successful businesswoman. Her name was Lydia. And she and her whole household uh, became believers in Jesus through, um, through hearing about the gospel from Paul. And then uh, this major obstacle happens that a, a slave girl who uh, is demonized, Paul prays for her, she's delivered, but her owners have Paul and company tossed into jail. Late at night, they decide they're going to worship the Lord. And as they're worshiping the Lord in jail, God sends this earthquake and shakes the prison loose. And the result is that the jailer and his household become believers in Jesus. And so we see that God has taken these, these obstacles and as, as Paul and, and company keep their eyes on Jesus, God turns things around um, and, and begins this little church. Some time passes now, and Paul is in jail once again, probably in Rome, and he's writing back to a church that in Philippi that has leadership in place now. Uh, they've been growing in their faith, and so, so Paul is writing to, to these folks, probably to, to the jailer in his household, to Lydia in her household, the slave girl and people like her, um, as, they, uh, as they figure out how to follow Jesus together. So Philippians 1, 12, And I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. Paul had no idea that this letter would go far beyond this little church in Philippi. But across centuries and around the world, these words have encouraged followers of Jesus. Paul had no idea while he was in jail that what he was sharing, God would use uh, in such a dramatic way. And I wonder what it is that you and I are going through right now that in God's hands can be used for good for people around us and far beyond. I want you to consider doing something right now. Consider pausing the video and write down one or two things you're going through right now that you feel stuck. Maybe you have a difficult person. Maybe there's a loss. And ask, Lord, what do you want to do in me right now? How can you use this for me and for others? Back to Philippians 1, picking it up, verse 15. It's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry, but others preach Christ with pure motives. They preach because they love me, for they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely, intending to make my chains more painful to me. But that doesn't matter. Whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Christ is being preached either way. So I rejoice, and I continue to rejoice. So, 
in Paul's circumstance, there's, there's different camps of people. There's the pro-Paul camp and the anti-Paul camp. And his, his attitudes towards them is, doesn't matter. What's important right now is whether people like me or not, the gospel is being preached. What is it about us humans? We like to get into camps. And uh, right now during this COVID crisis, I see two camps. There's the yes mask wearers and the no mask wearers. And um, one I'm calling Camp A, and Camp A stands for ain't, ain't no way I'm wearing no mask because the government has overreached telling me what to do with my face. And then there's Camp B. B stands for be cautious for the sake of others. I'm going to go ahead and wear this mask. And we, like Paul, uh, have a choice to make. Either we can fight for my right to be right, or we can rejoice when the gospel goes forth, when there's opportunities for the gospel. So there's camp A, ain't no way. Camp B, be cautious. We're invited to a camp C. C stands for citizens of heaven. And we'll get to that in a minute. I want to pick it up. Verse 19, for I know that as you pray for me and the spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, this will lead to my deliverance. For I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed, but that I will continue to be bold for Christ as I have been in the past. And I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ, whether I live or I die. For to me, living means living for Christ and dying is even better. But if I live, I can do more fruitful work for Christ. So I really don't know which is better. I'm torn between two desires. I long to go be with Christ, which is far better for me. But for your sakes, it's better that I continue to live. Knowing this, I'm convinced that I will remain alive so I can continue to help all of you grow and experience the joy of your faith. And when I come to you again, you will have even more reason to take pride in Christ Jesus because of what he is doing through me. Paul's attitude towards his own circumstance of being in prison, I'm in jail for the gospel. If I die here, I go to heaven and have eternal life with Jesus, no more pain, sickness, suffering, only joy. Uh, if I live, I get out of jail, then great. I get to continue serving God and loving people. Either way, he's found freedom and joy in the midst of his circumstances. And then finishing up the chapter, above all, you must live as citizens of heaven. There's that camp C. Conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. Then whether I come and see you again or only hear about you, I will know that you are standing together with one spirit and one purpose, fighting together for the faith, which is the good news. Don't be intimidated in any way by your enemies. This will be a sign to them that they are going to be destroyed, but that you are going to be saved, even by God himself. For you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege of suffering for him. We are in this struggle together. You have seen my struggle in the past, and you know that I am still in the midst of it. So whether jailed or free, Paul continues to care about people. And his instruction to them is live as citizens of heaven. Not citizens of Greece or citizens of Rome, but citizens of heaven not citizens of L.A. County or Orange County or California or Hawaii or Washington or Wisconsin 
United States live as citizens of heaven first. When we surrender to Jesus and remember we've been called to a much higher purpose, it brings freedom, even in the midst of suffering. So God bless you and keep you and turn things around uh, for you and I these days that uh, he would turn our biggest obstacles into places where there's grace and we grow in faith and joy and just understand more and more of his perspective of our life. And I want to close with Paul's prayer that uh, was earlier in chapter 1, and it's verse 9. And this is a great prayer for, for us today. <clears throat> I pray that your love will overflow more and more, and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For what I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. So help us, Lord. Help us follow you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.